You're listening to the Author Stories Podcast. Bringing you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Margaret Wine, Terry Brooks, Sheena Kamal, Matthew Quick, JT Ellison, Walt D. Williams, Brad Ford, Corey, Dr. O, Brandon Sanders, Robin Mock, Ernest Klein, Tim Butcher, Sherwin Harris. Visit hankgarner.com for archives of all the shows. Today's guest is. Well, thanks for joining me again for the Author Stories Podcast, where I bring you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Today, I'm super excited to have Michael Elias on the show with me today. He has a phenomenal new novel. It's called You Can Go Home Now, and this needs to be in your summer to be red pile. Uh, This is an amazing book. Um, Welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to have you, Michael. Um, We begin each show with the same question, and that question is, what is your first memory of wanting to be a writer or storyteller? Um, I I think storyteller is, um, I came back from, from school, probably elementary school, I hope, and said, can I tell you what happened to me today? And told the story. And uh, I, I must have gotten a parental approval and uh, maybe a laugh. And I said, I like doing this. And I've been telling stories ever since. That was the first telling of uh, writing. Uh, probably, I would say, uh, junior high school, I started having ideas for short stories. But I must say that the idea of actually becoming a writer uh, did not occur to me or something I would take seriously. Wow, I could do this or I could be a writer. I think that happened uh, later on. And I would even say um, I had a long career in Hollywood as a writer, but In a lot of ways, it was my day job. Uh, And I collaborated and had writing partners, which made it easy. Uh, I didn't have to do it myself. Uh, And at some point in my television or film career, I realized I wanted to do it myself. I wanted to write my own, really my own stories uh, and I would work during the day as a TV writer or a screenwriter with, uh, as I said, whether it was Steve Martin or Rich Eustis or Carl Reiner. But at night, I would write my own my own material, my own stuff. So uh, I'm a funny it it was it's a funny kind of position to be uh, earning a living as a writer, but not yet being a writer. (laughs) I I I completely (laughs) understand that sentiment. Michael, you you talked about your long history in Hollywood, um, but you grew up very far from Hollywood, didn't you? I did. I grew up in a tiny town in the uh, Catskill Mountains, population fifteen hundred. Um, but we were it was and it was entirely provincial. It was rural, and uh, my father was a local doctor, uh, GP. My mother was a librarian in the school, but. We were two hours from New York, and uh, we went to New York a lot. Uh, and my father we would take us to uh, art galleries. We would go to Broadway shows. We would uh, see foreign films. So I had a very uh, – I had a combination of, a, as I say, a small-town life and, uh, and an uh, exposure to uh, the culture of New York City. So uh, – which you know. is which is fascinating. Um, one thing that I love to to think about and to ask people about um, is this idea of place affecting the kinds of stories that we tell. And you know, growing up in in New York State, uh, outside the city, and as you described it, a very provincial um, type of upbringing, but being so close to the epitome of of metropolitan life. Um, how do you feel like that place where you grew up and, and had your formative experiences affected you as a storyteller down the road? 
Uh, good question. I, I would say that um, I learned that everyone has stories and people have stories and it's not necessarily professional storytellers. Uh, I, as a, I, I love to uh, hang out in a local coffee shop or, and listen to people talking uh, and they, whether bus driver or the school bus driver, the, uh, I, I grew up in a prison town also. So I, there was a lot of prison uh, lore, uh, state prison and, gas stations and and i just in it, it it enriched my life in so many ways that i i uh and i use i learned to use it i learned i, I stole it I, I i hoarded it i put it in my memory of these wonderful characters uh it was rich and uh so i had that and then i could go to new york and you know get get all the rest <laughs> the fancy stuff but uh, and I had a very diverse, as I said, very diverse uh, bunch of friends and farmers, kids, prison guards, kids, uh, local store owners, kids. And then also because it was the Catskill Mountains, the hotels, uh, uh, which was a destination for New Yorkers in the summer, uh, they prov- all of a sudden in the summer, the, the whole atmosphere changed. And we had all these New York kids and kids from Brooklyn coming up with their families. And uh, it was it was very exciting uh, time to uh, uh, and we all we all worked in the hotels over the summer and uh, vacations. It was um, it was good. It was good. good how, for writing. <laughs> how does a, uh, a kid from the Catskills um, make the trip out to Hollywood. How? What prompted that? And and uh, you know, uh, in the in the nineteen sixties, um, you know, what was the draw for for a kid from clear across the country? I was summoned. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will say that uh, part of my career. I mean, I started as an actor uh, after college, and uh, then I shifted into improvisational comedy. And uh, with a friend, created a comedy team, and we had we had a modest uh, success. Uh, we opened for rock and roll groups, and 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 the Turtles, and toured and did nightclubs. But we also made it to the Carson Show, Johnny Carson. And we didn't make it to the panel, but we 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 did four or five. And uh, at one point, uh, a producer from Hollywood called and said, "Who writes your material?" And we said, "We do." He said, well, I like it. Uh, Would you like to come to Hollywood and be comedy writers on my next show? Uh, That was the summons. And we said, we'll be right there. And uh, (laughs) so we we said, what about the act? He says, I'm afraid I'm not interested. So we became writers. And uh, that was the beginning. We started off writing uh, little variety shows. And then we went to uh, the big variety shows, Glenn Campbell, uh, Smothers, uh, Leslie Uggams. And at the same time, uh, we did uh, sitcoms and uh, and eventually had an idea for a movie. But at the same time, it was, I, I, as I said, I always knew I wanted to have a part of me that was that told my own stories that came out of my life. Uh, not Glenn's or Cosby's or Dick Van Dyke's. I wanted them to be my own. And that's where I uh, uh, ended up, I could say. My first my first alone uh, thing was a, uh, was a play, uh, uh, autobiographical, about growing up in the Catskills and, and w- working in a hotel. Uh, and then, and then the novels and, and then I was, uh, it kind of, uh, my, my television and film career, uh, seemed to be kind of over. It was, I suppose it was a friendly divorce and I was, but happily, uh, writing my novels. Noveler is the best way to write a novel. Why? quite simply because we've made it the easiest place to do it. Writing a novel is hard enough. Noveler takes care of all the logistical bits of writing a novel, just leaving that small matter of the words to you. It's a clean, beautiful writing interface with writing analytics, goals and streaks, advanced grammar checking, version control, 
day, evening, and night modes, and many other features designed to take all the stress out of writing. Tell us what you need and we'll build it. Together, we'll build a better tool. With a design-led approach, all the right tools that you need, Noveler saves all your words constantly, allows you to manage and order your novel easily. It's accessible from any device, desktop or mobile. It syncs to Google Drive and Dropbox. It allows exports in various formats, including ebook and more. It also has nice touches like allowing you to write both offline and online, unique for a web-based platform. Everyone needs help with their writing from inspiration through to grammar checking, so we're doing our best to provide that support. We integrate that support directly into Noveler. Our advanced grammar checker powered by Pro Writing Aid does everything from spell check to style advice. Our writing courses include the incredible Tim Clare's Couch to ADK. We're really excited to offer all Author Stories listeners 30% off Noveler for a whole year. And it doesn't matter if you choose to sign up for the monthly or annual plan. You'll get 30% off. All you need to do is use the discount code HANK when you sign up. Noveler, N-O-V-L-R. That's noveler.org. Um, you, you mentioned earlier that uh, there was sort of a divide between your day job and your 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 heart's desire um, to to do the writing that you wanted to do. Um, can you look at that uh, body of work, your your day job, we'll just call it that body of work versus your personal body of work? And and are they different? Um, your your day job work um, it seems to be more comedy based in a lot of cases. Um, you famously wrote The Jerk. Um, you worked on a show that I was very familiar with as a late teenager, the head of, uh, head of the class. Um, there was a lot of comedy in your day job writing. Um, is there a separation there for you? Um, yes and no. The, 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 the comedy uh, that I was doing my day job, which a lot of it I'm, I'm very proud of. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of head of the class. I'm, I'm proud of the jerk. Um, it was a lot of cutting edge stuff that you did in that. Yeah, I think and it was, it allowed me, uh, and rich to, uh, uh, it was actually a, a political show too. I mean, there were, there was characters, they, they talked about politics and it was right during, it was during the Reagan administration. And I, and I still have a collection of letters, by the way, from uh, Brent Rosell and others uh, complaining about, uh, making fun of Ronald Reagan and Oliver North and taking the side of unions <laughs> and so forth. So that was good. But there's a part that you, uh, that you have to write by yourself because you can't, I don't think you can write a nightmare or, or really personal stuff uh, in a room with somebody else. You have to, I think it's, it's your own. And there's something else that, and I think, uh, it was, uh, oh my gosh, I can't, um, who said, and his name will come to me, if you're a Hollywood writer, you have to keep a part of you that's that you own, that's yours. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be a play. It can be a poem. It can be uh, a novel. But whatever it is, you should be doing something that nobody owns, nobody can tell you what to do, nobody can change it while you're, you know, as you write it. And that will that will keep your your sanity in a way, um, and keep you connected to the maybe. And this is relates to your question about comedy versus drama, and uh, that will keep you connected to your darker, your darker self, um, which could also contain comedy. Uh, uh, I, I believe that you know uh, we all have humor in us. We all laugh. We all find things that are funny. You got to be. You know, crazy not to. And uh, I'm, when I was writing television and things like that, you know, the jerk, we were selling and writing comedy, really, you know, trying to make you laugh as often as we could. And if we could make you cry a little bit, that would be good too. But that's, but when you write, say, if I'm writing my own stuff, really my own stuff, it is going to allow me to uh, project that maybe that darker part and uh i'm not i'm not in 
I'm not starting out with the basic premise of um, let me make you laugh. I think there's humor in 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 in, in my books uh, for sure. Uh, there's there's some funny stuff in uh, you can go home now. As dark as it is, because what would life, real life, be like without humor? So uh, that's that. It's um, and. Uh, yeah, I, I think I hope that answers your question. I, I'm sorry I can't remember who's. Oh, I know. I wanted to say one other thing. That is, when you're writing in Hollywood, you don't own it when you finish it. If it's you sell it, they own it. They can do what they want with it. You know, you could sell a screenplay, and they could say, you know, we're turning it into a cartoon. Uh, you. <laughs> so <Right. laughs> when you and when you write a novel uh, or a play or, or a poem. Um, you have the ability to say no if you want it published. But I have had times, uh, you know, we all we all talk about notes, you know, network notes, producers notes, directors notes. Uh, you, know, you sell a screenplay. Uh, the first thing that could happen is you could get fired because the director wants to either rewrite it or bring him his own his own writers. So that's uh, it's different when you do the other when you write a novel and that's the part that we have to, you know, we, we, we like. Well, I'll just say this uh, one last thing about the idea of comedy versus drama. Um, when I'm, when I was reading, you can go home now. There are definite moments of, of dark humor uh, in this book and ones that make you kind of go, Oh wow. That's uh, you know, it's, it's really, satisfying in a lot of ways and you know uh, one thing that i think a lot of younger thriller writers um will do is uh they just they want to keep the tension ratcheted up you know to 100 through the whole novel and you're just wrung out by the <laughs> end of it you know you're just like oh my god you know there's 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 no room to breathe inside that inside a, a manuscript like that and uh you know a uh, a um uh, an intelligent writer will know that that the audience the reader needs these moments where the tension ratchets up and then we need to ease off of it we need to give them a chance to to ponder what's going on we need to give them a chance to laugh if they can um so that when the next moment of tension comes it's more impactful and i i really appreciated that about this book oh thank you very much thank you yeah I'm glad you did. Yeah, um, it's on purpose. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> the the idea of uh, writing in a writer's room or, you know, with a writing partner or, you know, whatever that collaboration looks like versus writing a novel, um, you're absolutely right. When you're writing a novel, you are in complete control and not a member of uh, of a troupe or, you know, a group or, or whatever. Um is that creative process completely different for you when when you are the master of this universe? Well, uh, yes, uh, I don't have to, you know in the room. I don't have to answer to anybody by myself. I, I, and that's that's great, and it's also harder. Uh, but when I'm finished, uh, or sometimes even no, I would say when I'm finished, uh, I give it to people to read, and I ask for help. And I ask for criticism, uh, especially with this with this novel where I, I wrote it in the voice of a woman. Uh, I made sure a lot of women read it before I submitted it or uh, stamped finish on the cover. And I got uh, I got beat up a few times. Uh, and I I uh, I'm grateful because. Uh, I wanted to get it right, and uh, I, I hope I did. And uh, but it was really useful. And then also in my process, I once it was finished, I also hired professional editor uh, to uh, to read it and give me notes. Uh, and then when it was uh, accepted for publication, I worked with an editor, uh, Sarah Nelson at Harper Collins who also uh, helped me a lot and gave me great suggestions, uh, but always saying, it's your book. It's your book. These are not, 
This is, these are not orders. These are suggestions to make it better. And I would say most of the time she was right. And I would try them. Uh, I never, uh, and there's a wonderful story about, and I, I think this applies to writing in a room, uh, too. There's a story about the Juilliard, uh, string quartet where if somebody had a suggestion, they never discussed it. They just did it. Somebody said, we should play this a little faster. They said, okay, let's try it. And then they discussed it. They never said, uh, I think we should play this faster. And nobody said, well, I don't think that's a good idea. They just did it. So uh, that's a really, uh, I thought that was really made a lot of sense. And I tried to uh, think about things and, you know, if I get suggestions and uh, try them, then I can really know whether it works or not. World Anvil is a browser-based world-building platform designed for all world builders, writers and novelists, dungeon masters, game developers, and everyone else. World Anvil keeps your world setting safe and organized, helps you find your characters, locations, plots, timelines, and maps quickly and easily as you write. Then, if you choose, you can showcase your amazing world-building to the world, beautifully and interactively, to keep your readers engaged. You can even use our professional tier to build your career selling access to behind the scenes content your readers will love and growing your community. Build your world setting in any genre with over 25 custom built world building templates complete with prompts to inspire your creativity. Allow your readers to explore the public parts of your world in an innovative new way with interactive maps, timelines and wiki style articles. Give special access to co-authors, beta readers, customers, or patrons to see exclusive behind-the-scenes content. There's a free version to get started with, with all of the major features. Guild membership offers you a host of extra options, including comprehensive privacy settings, co-authors, presentation options, and so much more. Join our community of over 800,000 world builders, including professional authors, Take part in competitions and learn more about world building at this fantastic online community. Use the coupon code HANK to get 20% off all 6 and 12 month subscriptions. WorldAnvil.com. I'm a recent convert and I know you will be too. Right. Uh, Michael, having uh, one foot over in screenwriting and one foot over in, in novel writing, um, you have the benefit of, of seeing um, how the audience for these different art forms responds to things. Um, and I, I think we've all watched television or movies from the 1960s or 70s. Uh, and as compared to how we tell stories in that medium now, there are there are certain things that are different. Uh, we would we would never begin a show uh, the way that we do now, um, you know, the way they did then now. Um, and, and, you know, by the same token, um, if we, if we look at a classic like Lord of the Rings and in, in the fantasy genre, um, you know, there's nearly a hundred pages before anything happens in that book. <laughs> and, you know, we would never tell a fantasy author to begin a novel in the same way that Tolkien did, even though that, that novel's a classic and we all go back to it. Um, do, do you notice things, um, about novel writing, um, in, in the same way that I'm sure you'd notice about screenwriting, um, where the, the audience has changed, therefore the writer needs to change with them? Hmm. Well, I, uh, I think there's maybe there's more of an obligation now in f fiction thrillers and so forth to give the hero or heroine a darker past and they're more and and they're 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 more uh, say fallible i think um i th think there's probably more violence um, I, I don't know. Um, I think you're, you're certainly right about movies and how, I think how television, a series of affected, uh, movies, or at least the idea 
And when I, I, I started watching, going back and watching movies instead of series. Um, and the, th- the interesting thing was they ended. They were right. all <laughs> right. And you say, wow, well, okay. It wasn't um, lying and, you know, being in bed with my wife and saying, well, you want to watch one? Should we watch one more episode? Okay. And the next thing you know, it's four o'clock in the morning. And you, you and I think the idea that we watched, completed movies uh, as opposed to watching things that can, that can go on and on. I mean, now do I want to watch year three or four? I can't tell of, of Ozark. I certainly love the first season. I like, you know, I like them. Do I want to, do I really want to be with them for three years or four years or whatever? So uh, I have to say that I found a lot of pleasure in, in reading uh I mean, in, in, in watching movies. On the other hand, I do like to say, like everybody, oh, my gosh, there's a new uh, Donald Leon. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. There's a new, uh, what's his name, uh, Calamari? No, Calamari. Uh, the guy who does the Detective Montabano. Uh, I love Italian. I love Italian uh, <laughs> crime novels. Uh, so, But on the other hand, I don't want to watch four years of – uh, Sakuro, the Italian uh, television show about the criminals. I, I, it's it's a it's a weird maybe because you know Donald Leon writes one a year or uh, eighteen months. So oh my God, there's a new one and I, I can't remember the last one. But I, I okay, what's she up to now? In the same way with John Grisham, and um, I'm glad that. Can you imagine if if Jack Reacher was able to produce a novel every every week? <laughs> would we would we read them? I don't know. Uh, so anyway, that's that's. that's I think that's, if we had a new Reacher novel every week, our adrenal glands would probably be shot. I know. <laughs> you know, it would be there wouldn't be anybody left to beat up anymore. Right. Uh, right. Well, I beat up the last bad person in the world <laughs> or America. So. Uh, so your new book, you can go home now. Um, we we meet Nina Kareem. Um, where did she come from for you? Yeah, she came out of me. She came out of upstate New York, where I live, and she she lives in a small town where her father is a uh, doctor, uh, and uh, he works for Planned Parenthood, and uh, he's assassinated by a right to life fanatic, and uh, to better find him, uh, she. Gives up a career. She's seventeen at the time, but she gives up her her dream to be a, an academic or a, be study English and or, or literature and becomes a cop. And she becomes a cop so she can find him. Has a better shot at finding this guy who killed her father. She's bent on revenge. At the same time, uh, she's also a pretty good cop. She's a good homicide detective and she's investigating cases. And uh, she gets a pile of cold case murders. And she notices or discovers that four of them, these men who have been murdered, their widows have the same alibi. They were in a battered women's shelter at the time that these men were killed. And she has to investigate that. So I've told you, I guess, the plot of the novel. (laughs) (laughs) I'm always fascinated, Michael, by the beginnings uh, of things. And, uh, you know... um, a lot of writers get asked the question, where do your ideas come from? And, and that's kind of a lame question to ask because ideas are everywhere. Uh, you know, you, you only need to open your ears or eyes. But there's something about that that golden idea that kind of rises above the rest. And you you kind of look closer at it and go, hmm, maybe there's something there. Um, what is that first kernel of an idea that comes to you when you're beginning uh, a, a novel specifically, or if you know, if, if you want to talk about any other forms, that's fine. But um, is it is it a character that comes to you first? Uh, did Nina Kareem show up, and then you needed something to put her in? Did did the idea of you know um, uh, someone who is motivated by their um, personal beliefs, and then that puts other people in harm? Um, kind of what was that first scenario that started unfolding that you knew that it was going to be a story behind it? Um, I think that takes us back to, uh, stories. And I think for me, it's, it's always the, uh, it's a, it's a, for me, it's a, what if, 
And uh, in, I suppose I went to uh, Peru on a uh, one of those you know treks, Machu Picchu, Inca Trail, all that stuff, and saw these beautiful ruins. And then and heard stories about the lost city of the Incas. And then I said, what if there's what if what if there's a lost city of the Incas that's still alive? And what if it's uh, what if it's kidnapping children? And preparing to sacrifice them, and 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 the city has gone wrong, and you need to you need to find them and stop them, and so forth. And I don't think that's a completely original idea because we have King Solomon's Mines. We have, you know, I have a friend who uh, Robert Silverberg, who was a big science fiction writer, and I said I wrote a thing about a lost city, of the Incas, and he said, "Oh, another lost city book." Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> So, but it's okay because it's better to be good than original. Uh, and I tried to make that my own. Uh, in this case, uh, the what if, um, I don't want to say exactly what the what if is, but I think uh, before there was a character, before there was even where I knew it would take place or any of that stuff, before there was Nina. There was the idea of what if there's a connection between men who are being murdered, who are abusive, dangerous, lethal men, husbands, lovers, partners, and a place that is protecting women. So I, I guess that's it. And then at the same time, I this title popped into my head, you can go home now. And I thought, wow, who would say to somebody, you can go home now? And what sweet words they must be. So as opposed to uh, growing up with Thomas Wolfe, who said, you can't go home again. <laughs> well, you can. Uh, so that's, yeah, that, that was the process. Uh, I would say it's always the story first, a glimmer of the story first. And then how do you tell that story? Who, who tells it? Where is it told? When does it happen? Is it, is it going to be, uh, you know, say, is it going to be science fiction? Is it going to be whatever? And is it, or is it going to be funny? So all of that comes into, uh, yeah, the, I think that's my process if it, if it is a process, but I, I mean, it's only based on, well, I now have, I, I'm, I'm writing another one and uh, there is another what if, uh, but I won't say that yet. Okay. Michael, is it fun for you or, or maybe a challenge to take what might seem on the surface as disparate elements, um, you know, a, a safe place for women versus men who are being murdered? Uh, you can go home now versus, um, you know, you can never go back home. Um, and and then weaving those things that seem to be disparate uh, into – uh, you know, a cohesive story. It, is that a personal challenge to you or do you look for things like that that you can then kind of riff off of uh, as you're writing? Uh, yes, yes. Because first of all, it is fun in the sense that it's you're solving problems. And if you can solve a problem and, 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 and if you can find a solution, that's, that's very satisfying. Um, and what writers, I think what writers do uh, is, and what makes writing alone so hard is you have to create a problem and then solve it and, uh, and solve it elegantly and solve it to the satisfaction and, uh, of, of your reader or your audience. Uh, and sometimes, it, and, the, and the problems are very simple sometimes. How do two people meet? What attracts them, um, so forth. Anyway, that's yes, that's that's uh, that's the the job, and it's uh, I, I confess it is it is kind of fun. Did I answer your question? I yes. think I may have lost you a little bit. <laughs> that's that's you know, in, Michael. Over your you know fifty year career um, or so, has your writing process changed? Um, do you still? Um, attack you know, the beginnings of, of stories the same way? Um, have you found things that, that have um, streamlined the process or is, you know, it, is it always, you know, a challenge with a blank page when you begin? 
Yeah, blank pages are hard. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I think. Well, let me see. I like to. St- I think I like to start with a, with a discovery of something. Um, the the uh, my novel, The Last Conquistador, starts with the discovery of uh, an Inca mummy that's 500 years old uh, by an expedition and then they find another one they dig it up and they unwrap it and it's five days old it's recently sacrificed so that's a i think that's that's a pretty whoa i like to start with a whoa that's pretty good and uh, yeah and i i I guess my uh, You Can Go Home Now starts with a detective getting three cases at once on her desk. Uh, one is a missing person. Uh, one is a man who confesses to a murder, only he doesn't remember who he murdered. And uh, the third is uh, a request to find uh, somebody's missing cat because she's a detective. So I think that's a good way into it. Uh, I don't know how that uh, occurred to me except – uh, oh, I know, uh, because I use stuff from other stuff. I steal from myself all the time. I had the idea of writing a, a, a movie about a man who confesses to a murder and he doesn't know who he killed. And I, But somehow, and I never did it, but I had I sort of outlined it a little bit, but I never did it. But then when I'm writing You Can Go Home Now, I said, well, that would be an interesting case. I don't want it to be the whole book, but that would be an interesting case for my detective to deal with, my homicide detective, uh, to help a guy find out who he killed. And then, of course, it turned out, well, I won't say how it turned out, but that's, but it became really useful. And then, let's see, uh, I had a friend who was a television producer who hired a private detective. Can you get this? A private detective to find his kid's cat, missing cat. And it turned out that the kid hid the cat because he wanted his father to help him find the cat because they had never done anything together because this guy was a workaholic. And it was sad, right? But it, but it came in and I could use it. Because the third case that she gets is a guy who calls her up and says, I want you to help find my, my kid's missing cat. You're a detective. <laughs> so that's the idea of mining. Uh, that's how uh, that's I guess that's how I write. I write by remembering things that are useful to what my story is. Michael, you said that you are writing another novel now. Um, does Nina Kareem show up in the new novel? No. No, this is a fresh one. But I'm also working on uh, uh, trying to figure out the next uh, chapter in Nina's life. So I'm kind of doing them simultaneously. And that's – I have the beginnings of the next Nina uh, chapter or novel, but I'm stuck. And I know it's going to come to me. And the minute it comes to me, I'm going to drop the other novel and finish the Nina. <laughs> I guess she's my first love. But in the meantime, I'm doing this other one. I love it. Uh, Michael, If uh, we're going to put links to You Can Go Home Now in the show notes of this episode where everyone can find it easily. Um, do you have a, a place online where people can connect with you if they want to dig into your storied career and all of the great stuff that you've gotten into? Yeah, it's uh, my website is Michael Elias Writer dot com, and it's it's a website glorifying my me, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it will have. And I suppose it. I think it has a way to contact me. Um, so uh, sure, I, I'm happy to share that. Excellent. We'll put links to that in the show notes as well. Uh, Michael, this has been so much fun chatting with you today. I'm recommending you can go home now to everyone this summer, and uh, we hope to see it show up on everyone's bookshelf and in their to-be-read piles. Uh, Thank you so much for taking time to come on the show with me today. Uh, I really enjoyed it. They were really, really terrific questions. Uh, um, Thank you very much. Really good. Really good. 
Want to grow as a writer and take your writing to the next level? Give Pro Writing Aid a try. Pro Writing Aid is a grammar checker, style editor, and writing mentor in one package. Pro Writing Aid will never replace a human editor. Rather, it helps you self-edit to a deeper level so that when you send it off to an editor, they will be able to focus on the meat of your writing and not spend their time fixing basic writing issues. Pro Writing Aid is the only platform that offers world-class grammar and style checking combined with more in-depth reports to help you strengthen your writing. Our unique combination of suggestions, articles, videos, and quizzes makes writing fun and interactive. Writing can be grammatically perfect but still feel awkward and clumsy. Pro Writing Aid searches out elements like repetitiveness, vague wording, sentence length variation, over-dependence on adverbs, passive voice, over-complicated sentence structures, and so much more. Nothing makes a writer lose credibility faster than spelling and grammar mistakes. Submit clean, error-free writing. Go to ProWritingAid.com and use code HANK20 for 20% off of Pro Writing Aid Premium. Pro Writing Aid. Check it out today.